Welcome to Module 45 of Mechanics and Materials Part 1. Today's learning outcome is to solve an engineering problem now when thermal effects are present, which we talked about last module. And so here's our example. Again, this is going to be a little bit longer module than usual because I want to go through the entire uh, problem so that there's continuity. Uh, now I have a bar BC, which is aluminum, cross-sectional area of 2,000, modulus of elasticity of 70 gigapascals, and the yield stress, again, of 0.28 gigapascals. But now I'm given a coefficient of thermal expansion for aluminum as shown, 22.5 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius. The bar DE is going to be made out of brass. It's got a cross-sectional area of 1,300 and a modulus of elasticity of 100 GPA, and a, a, a yield stress of 0.1 GPA. And I give you again the coefficient of thermal expansion for brass, which is 17.6 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, degrees Celsius. And we're going to once again allow, allow this brass and aluminum bar to deform, but we're going to assume that bar A, B, D, F is rigid. The weight of the bars will be neglected because they're much less than the forces that the bars are supporting. And I want to determine the axial stress in the aluminum and brass bars when the temperature decreases by 30 degrees. And we'll again work in, in these units, kilometers, kilonewtons per millimeter squared and gigapascals. Okay, so what do we do now to start the problem? And what you should say is let's go ahead and look at static equilibrium. Uh, how do I do that? What's the first step? That first step is always to draw a free body diagram. Go ahead and draw the free body diagram. Come on back and see how you did. And here's the free body diagram. You'll notice that I have to, I, I gotta be a little careful here. I've assumed that bars B, C, and D, E are in tension. Uh, you have to assume them to be in one or the other. Uh, if you're consistent and they come out to be negative in the end, if my bar uh, forces come out to be negative, then I'll know they're in compression instead of tension. But you should make that assumption up front. So go ahead and write the best equilibrium equation to start to solve the problem. What you should say is that's uh, summing the moments about F because that allows us to find uh, the, we're going to want to find the axial stresses in B and D. We're not interested in the reaction forces at F at this point in this problem. So here is my equilibrium equation. And it boils down to this. Uh, we want to find the stresses, so let's go ahead and put the stresses in for B and D. The stress in bar B is going to be the, uh, excuse me, the force in bar B is going to be equal to the stress in bar BC times its cross-sectional area, which is 2,000 times sigma BC. Do the same thing for D, and what you say is that the force in D is equal to sigma DE times its cross-sectional area, or 1,300, so now I have an equation with the two stresses in it. And this is shown here. We'll call that equation star. And so we have one equation and two unknowns. Um, those are my unknowns. That's what I want to solve for. So my question is, what do we do now? And what you should say is we're going to need an additional equation. What additional equation can we write? Well, we can write a deformation equation or a compatibility equation again. And so we're going to assume, as we did before, small deformations and small angles. This is my bar in its original position. This is in the deflected shape. This is the deflection total at D. This is the deflection. OK, so for the deflection total at D, I assume that this member was in tension. That means it shrank quite a bit due to the temperature change, so much so that I had to pull it back in tension with a normal force to have it end up being uh, uh, at the total deformation at D shown here. I'd like you to do the same thing for the deformation at bar B. And in this case, I've got deformation in bar B. I've got, uh, again, a cooling. So this is going to pull in this bar BC, and I'm going to have to have a tension to pull it back out to meet the compatibility uh, with the equilibrium and for the deformation to end up at this point. And so that's a good uh, deformation equation and compatibility, or compatibility equation. I can use similar triangles again to find out the relationship between the total deformation at B and the total deformation at D. That's the relationship I get. Um, so there's my equilibrium equation. 
uh, star or asterisk. There's my deformation equation. And let's go ahead and now put in the parts of the deformation due to the temperature change and due to the normal force. And so the force thermal displacement relationship is 1.5 times for dt total, that's the deformation due to the temperature change minus the deformation due to the normal force at d. Uh, on the other side, we have the deformation of b total is equal to minus the deformation due to temperature plus the deformation uh, due to the normal force. And I can substitute now in my values for my, my deformation for temperature chain, which is the strain due to temperature change times the length, and the deformation due to the normal force, which is PLL over AE. On this side, I have uh, for the bar DE. On the right-hand side, I have for the bar BC. Again, I can reduce this. I see that P over A for bar DD is the... Uh, stress in bar DE. Similarly, the P over A for bar BC is the stress in bar BC. And so I can calculate this out and I get another equation now, which we're going to call equation double star or double asterisk, that is a expression for the axial stresses in the um, aluminum and the brass bars. And so we can solve those simultaneously. Uh, we find out that the stress in bar BC, the aluminum bar, is 0 0.0989 uh, in tension gigapascals. That's less than our, our yield stress, so we are still in the linear elastic region. We had made the assumption that delta equals PL over AE, and it holds, uh, as I show here. And so we're okay with that assumption. Uh, what's the uh, stress going to be in bar uh, DE? And if you do that calculation, this is what you should have come up with. Uh, again, uh, we find out that it's less than the yield stress for brass, and so our assumptions hold, and this is the uh, stress in the aluminum, excuse me, in the uh, brass bar. And so we've gone ahead and completed the problem. Uh, again, a very good typical problem having to do with uh, coefficients of thermal expansion and what the thermal effects are on a system like this. And um, we'll go ahead and wrap up the course next module.